Pova Vijaha in the east, Jambuvipa in the south, Apa Rago da Nigya in the west, and Atsara Kuru in the north. The silver wheel king rules over all but the northern continent Osara Kuru. The copper wheel king watches over two continents, and the iron wheel king takes care of one continent. Shakyam Nibuddha passed up the throne of a king to live the whole life and cultivate. An emperor is the most respected person, honored as the son of heaven in China. His wealth and blessings were as vast as four seas. Shakyamuni gave up all of this to live the whole life and attain the way. He renounced his country, his cities, his wife, and tried all his towns, all his valuable palaces, and all his valuable gardens and groves. He did not crave any material things at all and gave up everything he possessed. He exhausted. He exerted himself to the extreme in the different kinds of different ascetic practices and was able to bear what is most difficult to bear. He renounced the king's throne for the opportunity to live a whole life and the ascetic practices which Shakyamuni Buddha cultivated in this life and in previous lives were very austere. Can most people do this? Sutra, he accomplished the great enlightenment beneath the tree, manifest different kinds of spiritual powers, gave rise to different kinds of transformations, made appear different kinds of Buddha bodies, and dwelled in different kinds of assemblies. He dwelt amidst the assemblies in the Bodhimandas of all great Bodhisattvas, the assemblies of South Yoras, the assemblies of Pratika Buddhas, he dwelt amidst the assemblies in the Bodhimandas of will turning sage kings and the retinues of lesser kings. He dwelt amidst the assemblies in the Bodhimandas of Shachiyas, Brahmas, elders, and lay people, up to and including assemblies of gods, dragons, the remaining eight divisions, humans and non humans. As he dwelled in various different assemblies such as these, with a voice that was full and perfect like a great thunderclap, he brought all living beings to maturity according with their likes and wishes up until the time he manifested Nirvana. In all these ways, I will learn from the Buddhas, and just as it is with the present world honored one, Varutrana, so it is with all the first come ones in every dust moat, in all Buddha lands, in the ten directions, and the three periods of time, throughout the Dharma realm, and the realm of empty space, in thought after thought, I will learn from them all. So it is that even if the realm of empty space is exhausted, the realms of living beings are exhausted, the karma of living beings is exhausted, and the afflictions of living beings are exhausted, still my study with them is without end. It continues in thought after thought without cease. My body, mouth, and mind never weary of these deeds. Commentary He accomplished the great enlightenment beneath the tree. After the Buddha meditated in the Himalayas for six years, he then went to sit beneath the tree, the Bodhi tree. When Shakyamuni Buddha went to the mountains, his parents sent five people after him to bring him home. But rather than fulfilling their mission, they ended up cultivating with him and acted as his drama protectors. Three of these five, however, were unable to endure the suffering and they soon ran off to the deer park to cultivate the way. The two remaining ascetics stayed with Shakyamuni during the time he ate one the same seed and one grain of wheat a day until he became just skin and bones. At that time, a heavenly maiden came to him. Some say she was a heavenly maiden and some say she was a milkmaid, but I do not think that the distinction is important. He appear, she appeared and gave the Buddha some rice curl prepared with milk and 
the Buddha accepted her offering and ate it. As he ate it, the two remaining ascetics who were still with the Buddha said, He had it now. So far, this prince has been uh, able to undergo suffering and cultivate the way, but now he is taking milk from milkmaid. He can't cultivate the way if he does things like this. So they packed up and left. Abandoned the Buddha, saying, You are unable to undergo suffering, so we can't cultivate with you. These two also left him to go to the deer park. Shakyamuni Buddha also wished to leave, and it was then that he went to sit beneath the Bodhi tree. The Bodhi tree was very large, covering an area of approximately one square mile. When Shakyamuni Buddha saw it, he thought it was a good place, so he decided to sit beneath the Bodhi tree and cultivate the way, resolving, if I don't perfect my karma of the way, then I won't get up beneath this auspicious tree. At that time, the youth named Auspicious gave him some auspicious grass, and Shakyamuni Buddha sat down on it in four lotus and cultivated the way. He cultivated for 49 days until he saw a bright star in the east and became enlightened. As it is said, in the night he saw a bright star and enlightened to the way, and singing three times he said, Strange indeed, strange indeed, strange indeed. All living beings have the Buddha nature and can become Buddhas. It is only because of their false thinking and attachments that they cannot certify to it. Why is it that living beings do not become Buddhas? Because they have false thinking and attachments. He manifested different kinds of spiritual powers. He manifested the wonderful function of spiritual powers and changes and brought forth all kinds of inconceivable states. He gave rise to different kinds of transformations, made appear different kinds of Buddha bodies. He brought forth by transformation all kinds of Buddha's bodies and also brought forth the pure Dharma body of Vairochana Buddha, the perfect reward body Nishanda Buddha, and hundreds of thousands of millions of transformation body Shakyamuni Buddhas. He manifested all these many different kinds of Buddha's bodies to the extent that he manifested bodies going throughout the ten directions accomplishing Buddhahood, endowed in different kinds of assemblies. He spoke drama for everyone in all the many drama assemblies. Perhaps he dwelt amidst the assemblies in the Bodhimandas of all great Bodhisattvas. He spoke drama and lectured sutras for all the great Bodhisattvas who came together, or the assemblies of sound hearers, the assemblies of Pratyeka Buddhas. He also explained the sutras and spoke drama for the gatherings of those of the two vehicles who had set up Bodhimandas, the sound hearers and Pratyeka Buddhas, or he dwelt amidst the assemblies in the Bodhimandas of will turning sage kings and the retinues of lesser kings. Previously, I explained that there are four kinds of will turning kings the gold will turning king, the silver will turning king, the copper will turning king, and iron will turning king. The gold will turning uh, king rules everywhere beneath the four heavens, and he possesses seven precious jewels. These seven jewels are not gold, silver, lapis lazuli, crystal, mother of pearl, red pearls, and carnelian. What are they? The first is the will jewel. When the gold will king rides on his will jewel, he can go faster than a rocket. In two hours, he can travel everywhere beneath the four heavens and do all kinds of things. The will jewel is a flying wheel which can travel on land, on the sea, and in space. It can even travel in fire. The wheel turning king's second jewel is the elephant jewel. The white elephant jewel, when the wheel turning king rides on his elephant, he can move about very quickly. His third jewel is the purple horse jewel. This horse 
is a dragon horse which can also travel on the earth or water and can gallop rapidly through space. The wheel turning king also has the wish fulfilling jewel which is also called the wish fulfilling pearl. This spiritual pearl manifests all kinds of spiritual powers so that whatever the king thinks about actually appears. The king's fifth jewel is called Jade Woman. Whenever he wishes, a beautiful woman will come to him. He also has the jewel of capable ministers of the treasury. Because he possesses this jewel, the earth opens up wherever he goes and gives him whatever he wants. If he wants gold, it opens up and gives him gold. By means of this jewel, he can obtain whatever valuables he wishes for. The wheel turning king seventh jewel is called the general jewel. When he must deploy the military forces, he does not need to use ordinary soldiers, but by using this general jewel, he can call up as large an army as he wishes. The wheel turning king also has 1,000 sons, each one a brave and courageous warrior who is especially heroic. Lesser kings are kings of lesser stature than will turning kings. The Buddha dwelt in the Bodhimandas of the assemblies of all these kings. He dwelt amidst the assemblies in the Bodhimandas of Satriyas, Brahmans, elders, and lay people. Satriyas are a high-ranking social class in India, the ruling class of India. Brahmans are those whose conduct is pure, who cultivate pure practices. Elders are old people with great blessings, and lay people are the laity. The Buddha dwells in all of those assemblies, up to and including assemblies of gods, dragons, and the remaining eight divisions, and humans and non-humans. When he became a Buddha, he also dwelt in the Bodhimandas of the assemblies of gods, dragons, and the remainder of the eight divisions, as well as humans and non-humans. As we dwelt in various different assemblies such as these, with a voice which was full and perfect, the perfect sound of the Buddha is like a great thunderclap, just like a great clap of thunder resounding in the air. He brought all living beings to maturity according with their likes and wishes. He followed along with the wishes of living beings and brought them all to maturity, causing those living beings who had not yet planted good roots to plant good roots, those who had already planted good roots to increase them, and those who had increased their good roots to bring them to maturity. He also caused those whose good rules had matured to obtain liberation up until the time he manifested Nirvana. At the end of his life, he entered Nirvana and obtained its four virtues, permanence, bliss, true self, and purity. In all these ways, I will learn from the Buddhas, just as he practices all the many ascetic practices and explains the Dharma in all Buddhimandas so too I will do the same. I will accordingly study these many methods of practice, and just as it is with the present world honored one Varutrana, the pure Dharma body Buddha, who pervades everywhere and who cultivated all methods of practice amidst assemblies in the Mayras of Bodhimandas, so it is with all the first come ones in every dust mode in all Buddha lands in the ten directions and the three builders of time throughout the Dharma realm, and the realm of empty space, in thought after thought, in each and every thought, I will learn from them all. I will always study and cultivate the methods of practice of all Buddhas. So it is that, even if the realm of empty space is exhausted, I will continue with my study and practice in this way. Even when the realm of empty space no longer exists, when the realms of living beings are exhausted, the karma of living beings is exhausted, and the afflictions of living beings are exhausted, still my study with them is without end. Even when the realms of living beings are empty, the karma of living beings is empty, 
and the afflictions of living beings are empty. Nevertheless, my vow to study with the Buddha will never end. It continues in thought after thought without cease. I will learn from the Buddha in thought after thought, and my study will never end. My body, mouth, and mind never weary of these deeds. My body, mouth, and mind will continue these deeds without every tiring. There will never be a time when I become tired, lazy, or when I grow weary of the Buddha Dharma.